Pat Bolin is a uh, giant in Colorado and in this region, and his name is synonymous with Denver Broncos. He was mile high magic for us. He, he brought that mile high magic to Colorado. And to, and to build this team like he did, it was, it was amazing to see how, throughout the years, how he progressed and brought in big name players to, to win a championship for the city. Every chance I had to take photos of, of Mr. B, as everyone refers to him as, it, it was a great honor. He's built the finest football organization, I believe, in the country. And he put so much of that effort into the uh, Denver Broncos that it is Colorado's favorite team. It's the region's favorite team. He was the son of a Canadian oil man, but he wanted to be an American football player. He went to Oklahoma and wanted to be a football player. He couldn't do that. So what did he do? He did something better. He eventually bought an NFL team. But he wasn't an athlete wannabe. He was a real athlete. The football players on the Broncos really respected that. And Pat Bolin had a real affinity with athletes on the Broncos because of that. And I think it instructed Pat Bolin, informed Pat Bolin, and shaped Pat Bolin as an owner. He had such high admiration and deep respect for football players as athletes that everything he did as owner of the Broncos was to help the athlete perform at his very best. Not a good person to go watch a football game with because he's so intense he's not going to talk because he's on the field playing. He takes every hit, he's uh, involved in every pass and he feels everything going on on the field himself. really intense guy, but that says a lot about Pat Bolin. Most people don't know what a great athlete that he and Annabelle are. Now, I know most people think of Pat Bolin and think, this one's for John at the Super Bowl or the mink coat on the sidelines. But when I think of Pat Bolin, the first thing that comes to my mind, the first image in my brain is of this young dude wearing short shorts. One of my favorite photos that I had taken of him was probably in, uh, in Greeley, Colorado, where they had training camp. When he walked up, short shorts, and he walks over to John Alway, who is also in short shorts, and they just stood there and, and talked to each other for you know, a good half hour during practice. And um, that was Pat. Pat was always, always around the field. Pat Bowling took over the Broncos in the 1980s. And the 1980s was a far different world than it is today in the NFL and in fashion. Um, in the 1980s, NBA players wore those short shorts. Pat Bolin in the 1980s was a serious triathlete. And the Broncos had training camp up in Greeley, Colorado. Pat Bolin went to camp too, and he trained for triathlons. And so he'd come out to practice, and the owner of this team would be sweating profusely after a run in these short running shorts, or a bike ride in these short running shorts. And what struck me was, this dude, this guy, this owner, really is an athlete. He was always out on the field. He was a football person. He loved football. He loved his team. Ed McCaffrey one of the most loyal Broncos ever, on the night that the new stadium opened in 2001. Ed McCaffrey broke his leg. And that was a long, tedious um, recovery time for Eddie Mack. Eddie Mack would get to the training facility of the Broncos before dawn. 
and who would be right next to him on the bike? It would be Pat Bolin sweating right next to Eddie Mack. That's how Pat Bolin made the Broncos a family, and that's why the Broncos were so successful under Pat Bolin and will be so successful going forward. That's Pat Bowen's legacy.
Towards the end of the games, I always looked over and there he was walking out on the field. He would walk over to the sidelines and watching the clock count down whether the team was losing or not, he would always be there. And he would always be there to, to greet the players and the coaches. And he was just so wonderful for this community and he's gonna be greatly missed.